with music by Richard Rogers, lyrics by Stephen Sondheim, and book by Arthur Lawrence. The show is about Leona, a 30-something repressed American secretary who went on vacation to Venice, fell in love with a married man, and returned to America sadder but wiser. <laughs> We're doing well. That wasn't even really a joke. Great. Um, uh, before Oscar Hammerstein died in 1960, he told his protege Sondheim and his writing partner Rogers that he wanted them to collaborate when he was gone. When the idea came up for Do I Hear a Waltz, Sondheim, who was 34 at the time, really wanted to write his own music as well as lyrics. Uh, but he just had a big disappointment, of course, with Anyone Can Whistle closing after only nine performances, and he had essentially no money in his pockets. Here was an idea for a show based on a hit play by his friend, Lawrence, and he'd be collaborating with Rogers, fulfilling his mentor's wishes. With some coaxing from his good pal, Mary Rogers, he decided to do it. That was an unintended Merrily reference. Pal, there you go. Everybody drink every time I make a Merrily reference. See what happens. Oh, God. <laughs> so, okay. So, so the creators aim to put on a musical about the intimate world that Leona encountered in Venice. So no cliches here. Now, as Richard Rogers said, we would not have a comic ballet featuring gondoliers. Very firm. <laughs> The three writers seemed to start out with the same vision of integrity for the show, but soon it was very clear that they were not on the same page. Rogers publicly ridiculed Sondheim's work, famously refusing to use his original biting lyrics for the song, We're Gonna Be Alright. Their age difference of about 30 years was only one reason for the tension that started building during rehearsals. I wonder what the other two were. Uh, somebody research that. This uh, is clearly like a terrible photo, but it's Do I Hear a Waltz at the 46th Street Theater, which is now the Richard Rogers. It was at the library, like it was a negative, and I was like, I have to copy this. But I think it's pretty cool. 
It's pretty cool. Uh, years later, thank you, SNL fans. Uh, years later, Sondheim would refer to Do I Hear a Waltz as a why musical. Um, in his words, it's a perfectly respectable show based on a respectable source that has no reason for being. Now, drop your water. Uh, now, while musicals usually, these why musicals usually come from successful movies, uh, novels, or plays, and their authors are blinded by the attractiveness of the original piece. Now, they never ask what the music will do for the story that hasn't already been accomplished by the original author. Some are successful, but it's usually a fool's game. The biggest hits have generally been written by people who loved the story that they were telling and how they were telling it. In the sorry case of Do I Hear a Waltz, this did not include us. Do I Hear a Waltz actually ran for seven months at the 46th Street Theater, which is now the Richard Rogers. Uh, the show was faintly praised by critics, who generally agreed that it was professional and enjoyable. Those are like, uh, The original choreographer, Wakefield Poole, holds a special place in musical theater history. I hope someone in the audience knows this. Yell out if you know this already. Uh, years later, he told Hal Prince that he should ditch the logo that he'd approved for Follies and check out the artist, David Berg. So really, Wakefield Poole is responsible for the Follies logo. You know, just rewrite history like that. Wakefield Poole later became a pioneer filmmaker in gay porn. <laughs> what does one have to do to be a pioneer filmmaker? I didn't Google that. because Talk to me after the show, we can discuss it. Uh, as Leona, Elizabeth Allen was radiant, but not necessarily believable as a sweet, sad, washed-up woman. Do I Hear a Walt had the shortest run of any Richard Rogers musical in two decades. He would write only three more Broadway musicals, Two by Two, Rex, and I Remember Mama. Sondheim didn't get back to Broadway after that for five years, and when he did, it was with company. At the very end of his book, Finishing the Hat, Sondheim is writing about Mary, let me roll along, drink, uh, and he says, my realization is that once I had a Franklin Shepard moment myself, it was when I agreed to write Do I Hear a Waltz. I took the job out of expedience and greed, and although I didn't pay for it as heavily as Frank does, it taught me a lesson. I never again wrote anything that wasn't for love. And it had a silver lining because the experience helped me to write Merrily We Go Along, Drink Again. <laughs> I think you can see all of that in that photo, that's why. <laughs> you can see it all. 